Ooh, that shook the camera. That was probably a bad idea. But uh, how's it going, everybody? We are fixing to hop into a quick Pinhoti takeaway. We're going to be talking about roosted turkeys and how we approach roosted turkeys. First, we'll start from the top and explain what I consider to be a roosted turkey. Uh, when I say I have a turkey roosted, this is what I'm talking about. This is a roosted turkey. And this is a roosted turkey. And I would call this a roosted turkey. If I pull over on the side of a gravel road and I hit an owl hoot or a crow call or whatever in the evening and I get a turkey to gobble a ridge over, two ridges over, 300 yards away, I'll tell you that I know, you know, a good starting point tomorrow. I know where we're going to, you know, be at daylight, whatever. But I'm not going to say I have that turkey roosted. If I have a turkey, what I would call roosted, then I know exactly what limb he's on. Or I can probably take you to the tree that he is in and put you within shotgun range of it. So the first things first when it comes to approaching roosted turkeys is you got to know where they're at. Now that we've got that covered, got a little list here that I'm going to be referring to because I've jotted some things down and there's a ton of stuff. We could sit here and probably talk for hours, but y'all don't want to listen to me for hours and I don't blame you. What I'm going to tell you here is not the holy grail. I can't tell you that I know any more than anybody else, but I can definitely tell you wrong just as good as anybody. So y'all can pay attention. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming at you. Uh, so put your listeners on and you boys from Auburn just do the best you can. All right, here we go. Where to set up? We're trying to figure out, in my opinion, I want to know right where his feet hit the ground. That's where I want to be. He's off limits when he's in the air and when he's on that limb, but as soon as his feet hit the ground, all bets are off. Dealing with rolling terrain and stuff like that, sometimes just being in, within shotgun range of them when they hit the ground is not enough. So how do we figure out where his feet are going to hit the ground? And a couple things that we take into consideration is ridge turkeys, turkeys on mountains like to pitch uphill. That's just a tendency that we have found. It's not going to be 100% correct. I've seen them glide all the way down to the bottoms before. As far as flat ground, we find that these turkeys want to land somewhere where they can see. Um, they're not going to land in waist-high grass. They're not going to land in thick ground cover. So we want to be somewhere where the grass is shorter or perhaps it's been beat down by a, you know, a road. Tractors driving over a, a hay field or something. We find that they'll target those areas where, you know, they can use their main line of defense being their eyeballs and they can scope it out before their feet ever hit the ground. So something that you'll see us do a time or two in the Penhody Project is we go in extremely early and we scout in the dark. Um, there's a couple situations where I can think of offhand on um, day six when Courtney killed her gobbler. We had this turkey kind of generally roosted and we went in there a couple hours before daylight to kind of scope out the water situation. We're going to take off because we're going to have to do some investigating in the dark. We're hustling in. We got to look at what the ponds look like on the other side of him. Hopefully they're dry. This is what I was afraid we were going to find when we got over here to this turkey. I was just trying to figure out where this turkey's feet were going to hit the ground. So we went in a couple hours ahead of time and walked it. You know, walked within 100 yards of that turkey to see what the ground cover was like, what the water level was like. You can also look into day 7 um, of 2018. Squirrel and I did the same thing. We had this turkey roosted, but then when we went in to set up on this turkey the morning of, uh, there was a lot of water. So we literally scouted around that turkey in the pitch black dark. We're trying to slip in where this turkey is and we've hit a bunch of water on the outside of this like dried what we thought was a dried up pond I'm not so sure we've been walking back and forth under this flipping turkey for probably what an hour yeah we get in here our whole plan has went to crap Going in extremely early, if you're unfamiliar with what's around the turkey, the ground cover, the water situation, the topography, it can be beneficial to get an early start and get in there and see if you can't figure something out before it breaks daylight. Some other things you may want to consider, hens and other gobblers. You know, these turkeys are obviously going to be getting together as soon as, you know, they fly down. So if you can get between them and their destination, that's the whole name of the game, right? So if you can determine that there's hens around and get between him and his hens, that's pretty fail safe. And another thing that we consider a lot of times is pressure. If you're hunting public ground and you know the pressure primarily comes from say the south and you want to get between that turkey and the primary access for your pressure because if the turkey pitches down toward the pressure you can kill him. If he pitches down the other way then you can make a plan B or a C attack on him and not be uh, having to run into interference with other hunters. Another thing 
is conditions, uh, weather conditions, and, and what that's going to be doing to the turkey. If it's rained all night, you're dealing with a wet turkey. Wet turkeys are not the most acrobatic flyers. They're not the most acrobatic flyers, even if they're dry. So when they're wet and they're heavy, typically those turkeys are trying to get from the limb to the ground as quick as possible. Once all of that stuff is taken into consideration, folks want to know how are you getting that close to those turkeys. Well, I could just leave it with, we just sneaky. We just ninjas when it comes to slipping in on turkeys. But that's not 100% true, even though it kind of is. We use things like uh, those ridge turkeys. A lot of times that water, if it's, uh, it'll wash the leaves out down in the very the ravines. The very bottoms will have a clear little trail that you can use to get up to that turkey where you're not going to be walking on leaves. Um, if I'm roosting a turkey and notice a deer trail, I will mark that exact deer trail so that I can walk it in in the mornings and, and cut down on the amount of noise I'm going to make in the leaves. And the most important thing is to make sure you give yourself plenty of time. These turkeys are used to hearing armadillos and skunks and raccoons and whatever below them at night. So hearing a little rustling in the leaves or whatnot is not a deal breaker, even though you want to keep that to a minimum. But if you do break sticks, trip, whatever, you want to have adequate amount of time to freeze, give it five, six minutes to kind of settle down and then continue making your approach. You know, that last 50 to 75 yards of your approach can be, you know, an hour long process and you got to make sure that it's not breaking light when you're doing that or you'll foil the whole deal. One last thing you need to take into consideration when you're making that final approach is full moon nights. Sometimes we just flat out can't get close to turkey and super dry leaves. In some situations where we haven't had rain in weeks and the dry leaves just sound like cornflakes, you just flat out can't get as close. No matter how much time you take, you're just going to sound like a bowling ball coming down through the hill. You're just going to have to make an educated guess as to where you can call that turkey to or which way that turkey's going to be going after, uh, after fly down. Okay, so now that I've brushed over some of those tactics or strategies or whatever you want to call it as to how we approach turkeys, let's hop into a few of the episodes here and see if we can't kind of elaborate a little further on that. What we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how our aggressive approaches have worked and how they've not worked. What we do is not the holy grail. So just because we do it doesn't mean it's the right way. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. And I'm going to show some of both here. Okay, so the episode two of the Kind of Live series was opening day of Florida last year. Hey everybody, welcome to opening day of turkey season. For the big boys anyway. And a little back history here. I roosted this turkey the evening before, knew exactly what limb he was on. He was roosted in this cypress head. We decided to set up on this turkey about 60 yards off the cypress head on his side in a little clump of pine trees because we were confident he wasn't going to glide down in the middle of the cypress head because it was an extremely wet year last year and the cypress head was literally full of water. We so, didn't really know of a low spot in the grass, so we just kind of had to gamble on that. But what we did do is we positioned ourselves between the main access point for most of the other hunters and the turkey so that if the turkey flew down to us, we would kill him. If he flew down the other way, we would have, you know, a couple other options to make another play on him. Let's see how that played out. And welcome to the gamble that is setting up extremely close to a roosted turkey. Um, these turkeys will glide from time to time, sometimes more often than not. It's just a tendency that some turkeys have, and these turkeys in Florida sometimes do glide quite a ways, and this one did. As you can see, he sailed by within arm's reach. Setting up this close to this turkey may not have been the best idea, but luckily the turkeys hit the ground, and they started drifting back our way in just a few minutes or maybe 10 minutes after his feet hit the ground, he was upside down. He about got away from us, big boy. All right, let's hop over to another episode. Let's look at episode 19 as another example here. Okay, so even I wouldn't have gotten this close to a turkey off the limb. This was a small piece of private land, and we have a lot of experience on this piece of private land, and these turkeys generally roost in this little clump of pines. We went in there extremely early and got set up way before daylight. And it just so happened that we were extremely sneaky going in, didn't make a lot of noise, and we literally slipped in underneath this gobbler. We were within five feet of the tree that he was actually roosted in. And as you can see... Being that close to the turkey on the tree did not pay off again. But luckily, even though the setup wasn't exactly perfect, these boys hit the ground about 150 yards away and curiosity got the best of them. We were able to coax them right back to the roost tree that they had just left.
The next episode we're going to hit on is day six of the 2018 season where Squirrel and I were back in Florida. As you can see, we were extremely close to this turkey. Squirrel had watched this turkey fly up to the limb the evening before, knew exactly what limb he was on. We sat up about 60 to 70 yards from the turkey on the limb, picked the right direction, he flew right to us. He just, here again, glided about 75 yards too far. So here again, setting up on that turkey that close, wasn't exactly the right thing to do. It took us about 30 or 45 minutes, but I was able to drop back calling and keep the turkey gobbling, and Squirrel was able to inch by inch make an advancement on that turkey who had glided from the tree to his strut zone and hit the ground and did not move, would not move. Um, that's something that that turkey had obviously done for days and days, most likely, and he was comfortable with his feet being planted in the ground right there. Boy, you kept him gobbling. <laughs> Just enough to me to weasel my way down like a snake. <laughs> and the next thing I want to hit on is episode 44. In this situation, I watched the turkey fly up, knew exactly what limb he was on from the evening before. This terrain was so steep, there was no cover that was going to allow us to set up to have the turkey in shotgun range and visible when his feet hit the ground. The turkey flew down extremely early, and he was within shotgun range. We just flat out couldn't see. Hours and hours later, after a whole lot of crawling and positioning and strategic movements, we were able to put ourselves within shotgun range of this bad boy. Looking at my examples here, it seems like I was able to come up with some situations that didn't work a lot easier than situations that did work, but obviously it still works or maybe we're just that dumb to keep doing it. But if you look at episode 33, in this situation I'm hunting mountain gobblers up in North Carolina. I was able to roost these turkeys the evening before. I didn't see them fly up to the limb, but I was able to get within 80 yards of them the evening before and had them gobble a handful of times, so I had them pretty well pinned. I was roosting them from the downhill side, and the next morning I approached them from the uphill side due to that tendency for turkeys to pitch uphill. I went in extremely early that morning because I knew I was going to have to go through some hardwood leaves two hours before it even thought about breaking daylight, and the last 50 yards of my approach took me well over an hour. But as you can see, I was able to guess correctly, and as soon as these gobblers' feet hit the ground, they were within shotgun range, and I was able to seal the deal. Now let's check out episode 42. In episode 42, sometimes the right decision just slaps you across the face, and you don't really have any other options, because in North Dakota, the trees are a pretty limited resource out there. We had... Uh, watch these turkeys go up to roost the evening before and we didn't have any other options as far as setting up on them other than getting right up under them. Getting right up under them is exactly what we did. We were 30 yards from these gob from the gobbler and the hens right off the roost. One of the things you got to make sure that you are taking into consideration when something like that has to happen is you have to have a solid setup. You have to be comfortable. Everything in position before it breaks daylight. You can't be positioning your gun and moving your gun and rocking your head back and forth because these turkeys, main line of defense is their eyes and they are going to be scoping that ground out. If you're down, you know, below them fidgeting and moving, then it's not going to end well. 
So we've touched on the aggressive approaches that we make to the roosted turkeys, and that's kind of our fail-safe. We do that more time than not. But sometimes we will make a safe setup, and typically if we make a safe setup, there's a couple reasons why. We're pretty confident we know where that turkey is going to be going after fly down, whether we watched him there a lot the evening before, or we have experience with that turkey. I'll point out a couple examples here. Episode 24 is one of these situations where we made a safe setup. Chubbs was able to go in the evening before, or the day before, and listen to this turkey gobble on the roost and fly down and kind of kind of observed him and which way he went down this hardwood ridge. The next morning, the leaves were extremely dry, so we kind of made a safe play because we were nervous we'd bump the turkey if we tried to be too aggressive. It's, it's so gradual, he would come down there, you know, and it fell over a tree or a junior. I saw that, that one up there. And the setup worked out just perfectly. We were able to talk the turkey into 40 yards, but Chubbs just wasn't able to get a shot. So in this situation, even though we didn't wind up with a dead turkey, it was the right decision making a safe setup. In episode 37 last year, you see a lot of the same thing. I was able to get in and work this turkey the day before and kind of was able to pick out what he liked to do and where he liked to walk. He's in the same spot. yesterday. If he does the same thing, we'll be in business. The next day I was able to get in there and get set up on him and I kind of took that uh, information that I gathered the day before and used that to my advantage and unfortunately for him he did the same thing two days in a row. There he is. Going right. You'll also see us in episode 7. In the first part of the episode, we made a safe setup. It feels funny sitting up that far from one, don't it? I don't like it. Chubbs had went in and roosted this turkey the evening before, but he had laid his eyes on this turkey a couple hours before fly-up, and this turkey stayed in this little meadow area for a couple hours, strutting and gobbling and really showing out for majority of the evening. So he was fairly confident that he was going to come back to that safe spot or his strut zone. Unfortunately for Chubbs, he did not. And you get to see us make an aggressive move on this turkey on episode 7 during the second part of the episode. And it still didn't work out. This was just one of those turkeys that just had a quirk about him we were not able to work out. Unfortunately for one of his cousins, who came from a very long way away, we were able to fill Chubb's tag. Well, I think we've covered everything I wanted to cover, so I hope I've been able to keep some of y'all's attention. So if you've enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. You have no idea how much that helps us out. And thumbs up if you feel so inclined. Stay tuned. We will be bringing more of these Penhody takeaways to you. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one.